apparently, at least when it comes to Pixar, um, they weren't having much fun, not only during the production, but afterwards right here, or at least just before it was released. This is very interesting. At the very least, the fact that Pixar was having layoffs at some point wasn't a huge shock to the staff. Employees were told layoffs would be happening at some point in January 2023, and Disney announced, quote, a strategic realignment that may that would include layoffs of 7,000 people from the company at large. 75 Pixar employees were laid off in June of that year. Those layoffs included Lightyear director Angus McLean, as well as Galen Sussman, the producer who became famous for saving Toy Story 2 after it was accidentally deleted from Disney's servers. Yes, uh, they were in such a oops. rush to. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah that, that was um, that was that was quite the incident right there. Apparently, they were such they were in such a rush to complete uh, Toy Story 2 after having picked it up from Disney themselves. I believe they were producing like a direct DVD sequel or whatever and john lester's like no this is not going to do we got to take it over ourselves well i mean they just they they got a little they got a little crazy they got a little wild and so yes they deleted the actual production file of toy story 2 like i think they were like 75 percent of the way done or something like that but uh, Sussman, who was in a unique working uh, position actually was 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 bypassing company policy by taking productions home with her and copying them on her personal computer and well they had a copy to go off of crazy stuff she's gone too some sources I was gonna say, more they should have they should have given her a bonus and said congratulations yeah. you're fired uh, <laughs> yeah yeah well we'll get into that think about, some... think about that for a minute what do you mm -hmm. suppose that file was worth in time and money spent so far oh get... i mean the toy story franchise yeah you're talking billion yes. dollars there you're talking billions. Yeah. A lot. Um, but yeah, should, uh, They should have given her a, a shirt that said, uh, I saved my company billions and all I got was this lousy t-shirt, you know? <laughs> it's a rough biz. You're only as good as your last uh, work, I, I suppose. Uh, some sources expected more layoffs in September 2023, but theorized that those layoffs were pushed back due to the amount of work that still needed to be done on Inside Out 2 after the summer strikes. For a good year and a half, everyone was on edge, one source says. I think that's maybe why they had their heads down and just worked as hard as they could. Instead, the layoffs of 14% of Pixar's workforce began in late May after much of the work on Inside Out 2 was complete. The layoffs, Dr. said in a recent interview with The Ankler, were, quote, another thing that made this year really weird. Unfortunately, now Disney has to come to a point where they realize, you know what, the amount that we spend on quality, it just doesn't make sense. Though expected, the news was a blow for many employees, at least in part because they would not receive a bonus for Inside Out 2's eventual success. To qualify for the bonus, an employee would have to have worked on a project for a certain amount of time, which, as noted, was most of Pixar at the time, and be employed at a time when the bonuses were distributed. That is real, real tough. Um, we'll go on in the article to, to recount as to why that was so devastating to these uh, to these Pixar employees. But that's a that's rough. I got to be honest. That's that's that is not cool. Um, are, are you guys surprised by that report? Um, was that something you maybe expected from Pixar itself? Uh, what do you guys think? Well, like I mentioned before, and I've worked in human resources for many, many years, and mm -hmm. unfortunately, this is nothing new for any company. Um, it happens more than you hear about. Unfortunately, you mm -hmm. know, this happened to these employees, and it's never good to hear about this type of thing. Um, but, you know, the, the joke with HR was always like, well, you know, we have to lay off, you know, people at the company because, you know, the company's not doing so great. And then what does the company do? They lay off HR. So it, it it's right. comes full circle eventually. It's kind of crazy, but yeah, it's it's. What was that movie with George Clooney going around firing people for companies oh, all around? Oh. I can't remember the name yeah, of it. It was yeah. a good picture, and it shows how yeah. it is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it it's look. I we knew that. Well, they knew it was coming. They didn't know when it was happening. It's just unfortunate because you know they're led to believe, hey, I'm going to be here for a certain amount of time. I'm probably going to get this bonus, and then boom, oh you're letting me go and I don't get the bonus. I mean, it's really unfortunate that companies do that type of thing because they work mm -hmm. you to death what they need from you and then they let you go. And that happens quite a bit, unfortunately. Well, and those people probably thought, boy, all this extra hard work I'm putting in to get this movie out. And now the movie's a huge success. They're going to lay somebody off, but it won't be me. Ah, 
Oh, oh man. But that's uh, the thing. It's always the people who don't think they're going to get laid off. They do get laid off. Yeah, yeah. That's a fair point right here. Well, anyway, oh, up in the air. There we go. To be told by our HR reps that we were not going to qualify for that bonus felt like an ultimate F you from Disney. One former employee says, and I believe Jonas brought it up in the last show, but I just want to go ahead and bring it up here. Uh, apparently Emeryville, California is just outside union regulation uh, known as tag, the animation guild. And so they're not technically on a union out there in Emeryville, California still currently Pixar remains outside of union coverage and without union rates. And by the way, they kind of excuse this with these bonuses. They're like, yeah, we pay less, but there's this huge bonus that you might get. One source says, and for a while I can see that, right? I mean, if they're a hit maker producing all kinds of hits, sure, there's your bonus. And by the way, folks, a lot of those productions were on Disney Plus only, so I, I don't think they qualify for bonuses there either. Other sources nope. say it's something that frequently comes up when talking to Pixar's recruiters and in offer letters. Uh, we work all year for that bonus, another says. That is what partially makes working at Pixar worth it. We depend on that. Depending on a project's success, along with other factors like whether or not it came in under budget, those bonuses can range from one week to ten weeks pay. Given Inside Out 2's record-breaking success, the bonus will likely be on the higher end for those eligible to receive it. Many employees, sources say, were counting on the bonus for Inside Out 2, especially since the bonuses were lower for Elemental and non-existent for Lightyear. And oh. Emeryville is not exactly a cheap place to live. Absolutely. Or, yeah. or, or rent a house or take your kids to school or get your hair cut or anything. Oh. Uh, so... <laughs> Yeah, so tragic. And this article goes on to detail just the reaction from these employees. If they had just tacked on something to the severance of those who were being let go, that was like, oh, here's a uh, prorating bonus. Feels like something that could have been done out of kindness to me. One person says, I think I would have gone it would have gone a very long way in their claims of trying to be compassionate and kind to colleagues that have to leave. It really crushed a lot of us. Another adds when we were told the day. Uh, we were laid off that it, the bonus, is only for active employees. I sobbed. Sources describe it as it, another gut punch when the news of the layoffs actually did come. Um, the day the layoffs happened was like a funeral. There was weeping and crying in the atrium, that famous uh, portion of, of the Emeryville studio. There are images from that day that are going to stick with me for quite a long time. By the way, just as a side thought, the state income tax, let alone whatever city or county or other taxes are involved in either your base pay or your expenses to do business or to live there, is about 4 or 5%, maybe more. Uh, all those people that complained at Imagineering about, we don't want to move to Lake Nona. We want to right. stay here. If mm -hmm. they calculated how much just on that they would save living in a non-income tax state, uh, common sense might have prevailed. Not to mention cheaper housing and everything else. Uh, yeah, and you yeah, asked or, about my escape at the very beginning of the show, Vash. Mm -hmm. Certainly a factor. Certainly a factor. I live where there's and, no state income tax now. And the article does mention people having to get out of Enreal because it's just too. And when I when I said to people that they looked at me like, wait, they don't take that tax. And I said, that's right. They still have cops and firemen and roads and bridges. And sure. They don't have the train to nowhere in Sacramento Valley. But. <laughs> You got to give up something, you know, sacrifice for your move. I suppose so. Uh, this this one, it's interesting because um, the article does actually maintain the context of when these layoffs occurred, what the feeling was like, yeah. the sentiment was like at the time. Because remember, at the time this occurred, Disney invested one point five billion dollars in Fortnite. One former employee laments one percent of that one point five mm. would have saved all of our jobs. That has got to be, uh, I think, uh, one of the worst quotes from this, uh, only because that's just got to hurt. I mean, that was Not obviously sure. an idea of staving off Nelson Peltz and his proxy battle. That's what the whole thing was about, you know, to put it in the press and put it on the earnings call day, if we recall, and the earnings uh, the share price shot up and all that uh, to 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 have that occur, that amount of investment for Fortnite, um in the wake of all this it's got to be truly tragic well i wonder i agree with you that it is on paper mm. i wonder how many people working at pixar think of themselves 
in the context of the whole company. I wonder how many of the, well, you know, we're Pixar, it's we're fair. special, we're different, we're, we're separate. I just don't know. I really don't know. It's but uh, they do now. <laughs> they do now. Yeah, we work for that great company who, when they had the biggest hit in the universe and money all over the place, tell us, oh, you didn't qualify under the rules. Mm. You know, it's the equivalent, and I don't mean to minimize the physical danger in the other situation, of saying, yeah, we left you for half an hour in a thunderstorm. Here's a t shirt and a poncho. I think the plan all along was to discard employees um, without these oh, bonuses yeah. in order to keep production costs down, everything like that. And look, if if you can meet, let's say, certain thresholds, like uh, is illustrated in the article, right? Some of those bonuses are are attached to whether or not you stay within production. So and I'm just saying, and so forth. This is all okay. quote unquote policy, not law. Even if it was in a contract, nothing keeps yeah. you from giving people more. As a, as a gesture of thank you and as a, right. a purchase of their loyalty in the future. Uh, I happen to be doing a show once upon a time that you all know <clears throat> uh, on a lot where another show reached a certain threshold and would probably have been done and everybody would have been very happy. But the network was so desperate to have that other show that they were willing to pay a whole bunch more to keep doing it for another two years. Right. And wrote a check for a number beyond belief to do that. What the producers did was went around to everybody on the crew, from craft service and key grips to director of photography, and handed out checks. Just handed out checks. Not based on their salary or based on a formula or based on a contract. Just a thank you very much. Let us make our success your success to some degree, too. Now, those checks are, of course, you know, you have to deduct taxes and their pay. But it also meant that if the show was getting towards the end of the day, and we needed a little extra time off the books, so to speak, as far as penalties or overtime. Sure, no problem. Mm -hmm. Because if you were the uh, key grip, they just gave you a check for 30 grand. Yep. If you were the director of photography, they just gave you a check for $400,000. And that's what good companies do. Mm -hmm. But and that's the thing is that companies have they're changing a lot. The the playbook, the rule books that they I understand, but I'm just saying the movie business is different because a windfall like that, or like Inside Out Two, uh, no regular company is ever going to produce one product that's suddenly going to have that kind of thing happen to it in a short amount of time. Sure. So they 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 figured the pricing of that product and the cost of production and everything into what they were going to sell it for, and if they sold twice as many, that's great but it's still inside the bounds of the formula as opposed to a out of the blue, you hit the lottery kind of situation like this was. So the mom gave us a super chat. And if you want to bring it up, yes. I think it's a good point. My company does quarterly bonuses, but ex employees still get what that bonus was for the time they worked during that quarter. This is totally yeah. unfair, but that's the thing is that a lot of companies have changed that they, they, they aren't doing that. I mean, and if you sign the deal, on. you sign the deal, you take the consequences, right. but you know, well, it, it, I think we all agree this is not, you know, fair, um, and that what Disney has done is unfair. But again, they're not the only I'm saying it. Is, right. All I'm saying is it's not about fair; it's about what's smart. Right. It's right. It's smarter to overpay people on the official rules mm -hmm. and get something from it uh, right. than it is to stick to the rules and say it's not my fault; it's the policy. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So sad. So sad. That was a highlight from our live stream on That Park Place Podcast it's online, where the full stream can be found at the link in the description. But what about you? What were your thoughts on this particular story? Please let us know in the comments below. Like this video if you did like this video. Share us out as it helps us out tremendously against the YouTube algorithm. And thank you so much for watching. T3, B.O. Please comment, like, and share this video. And don't forget to subscribe to That Park Place Podcasts online. Your source for exclusive content and highlights from WDW Pro. The Pro Show and That Park Place for all the news that should be fun.